Welcome to UGC sponsored e Pathshala learning project in food science and nutrition. I am Dr. Maria Margaret Joseph, Associate Professor of Women's Christian College, Department of Home Science. In today's module, we will see three basic objectives. One is how important personal hygiene is, how to develop a personal hygiene routine, and what are the different sources of contamination. Being in the food industry, it is very vital to uh, keep this uh, utmost hygiene and sanitation so that we can give a good quality service and uh, keep uh, many happy customers. The preparation and service of food requires handling of materials which are extremely vulnerable to becoming the media of contamination, thereby leading to the spread of infection and disease in the catering industry. Therefore, Hygiene and sanitation play a very vital role in promoting and protecting the health and well-being of people in large numbers. Keeping clean is essential for good health. Cleanliness is next to godliness. So we should always see that our personal hygiene, our place where we live, where we work, every environment is kept clean. Poor hygiene can lead to bacterial or parasitic infections and may cause skin diseases or other illnesses that affect your well-being. Washing hands well with soap and clean water helps to remove 99% of bacteria that can lead to the spread of a number of diseases and conditions. If you do not have clean water and soap to wash your hands, you can use any uh, detergent which has 60% alcohol. The process of uh, keeping clean personal hygiene has uh, six basic uh, points in it. One is to shower daily. Second is to wash hair as regularly as possible. To wash your hands thoroughly and regularly. Second is to shave daily and to use appropriate deodorants and to brush your teeth twice a day. Hand washing is very important as it helps to prevent a wide number of diseases, typhoid, cholera, shigella and many other common gastroenteric infections. Human feces are the main sources of diarrheal infections which claim the lives of 1.87 million children under the age of 5 each year, according to the World Health Organization. Research shows that children exposed to hand washing promotion and soap experience 30 to 50 percent less diarrheal rates compared to children who do not. Hand washing helps prevent respiratory infections such as influenza, which is a common flu, pneumonia, sudden acute respiratory distress syndrome and avian flu. Respiratory tract infection rates can be cut by 20, 21 to 45 percent if this simple thing of washing hands is followed. It helps prevent skin and eye infections such as impetico and trachoma, a bacterial eye infection. A study in Pakistan found that hand washing with soap reduced impetigo rates by 34% in children under the age of 5. Furthermore, hand washing helps to lower the infection, uh, incidence of infections caused by intestinal worms such as roundworm, ascariasis and whipworm, trichuriasis. It is a very cost-effective way of preventing ill health. It is the single most cost-effective way of significantly reducing DALY, which is Disability Adjusted Life Years, related to diarrheal diseases. DALYs are used to measure the burden of disease and the effectiveness of health interventions by combining information on the years of life lost and the years lived with disability. It stops children from missing out on their education. Diarrheal diseases force children to miss out on mil millions of school days each year. It increases productivity as people are healthier 
to take less time off work. So hygiene and sanitation in the long run provides good health and therefore uh, more attend attendance for school children, more productivity for working people and a bet better healthier life in general. Now the actual procedure for hand washing has uh, six uh, steps. The first one is to wet your hands thoroughly. Second is to use appropriate uh, soap. Third is to lather your hands at the back of your palm and on your palms as much as possible for 20 to 30 seconds. Next is to rinse it off thoroughly for 20 seconds and then is to uh, take off the extra moisture on your hand using an appropriate uh, towel or a tissue. Do not forget to wash in between your fingers and also at the tip and under your nails which harbor a lot of germs and dust and therefore infection. Effective hand washing requires soap and clean water. As I had said earlier, you wash it with either cold or warm water, scrubbing well. And then you have to uh, use at least 30 seconds for this procedure. And you can uh, get reminded of these 30 seconds by either counting silently to yourself from 1 to 30 or by keeping in mind some song short song which is about 30 minutes, uh, 30 second duration which will probably sing to yourself and uh, follow the entire procedure for 30 seconds. Fingernails can harbor dirt and germs and may therefore contribute to the spread of infections such as pin worms. Top tips for maintaining good nail hygiene include to trim the fingernail, uh, fingernails regularly Scrub the underside of nails with soap and water using a nail brush. Avoid biting your nails. Avoid cutting the cuticles as they help prevent infections. Nail clippers and nail files should be properly cleaned, especially if you are sharing it with others, other family members. Chipped nail polish and nail extensions can harbor more germs than those without. So clean off the extra nail polish regularly. Regarding dental hygiene, cleaning teeth regularly using a good toothbrush and a good toothpaste and safe clean water will help avoiding dental treatment such as fillings and permanent removal of teeth and also guard against cavities. Regarding hair and body washing, you must wash your body regularly and a hair also regularly with soap and good clean running water. With this could help prevent infections. Diseases such as trachoma, a bacterial eye infection can be prevented through regular face washing using soap and clean water alongside improved sanitation to reduce the breeding sites of flies which transmit the disease. People who suffer from lymphatic filariasis, a parasite that gets into the human body via a mosquito bite, can prevent sec secondary bacterial and fungal infections and decrease the likelihood of lymphoedema, developing into elephantitis. This can be achieved by using soap and water to wash the swollen areas, usually the limbs, every day whilst also disinfecting wounds with antibacterial and antifungal cream. A general seven point personal hygiene code can be developed for any person, especially since we are targeting the food personnel in our food operation system. These are the seven points. Always wash your hands before commencing work and always after using the toilet. Tell your supervisor at once of any skin, nose or throat or trouble illness that is there. Cover the cuts and sores with a waterproof band-aid. Always wear appropriate clean clothing. Keep your work area, equipment, utensils clean. Keep to a daily routine of personal cleanliness and hygiene. Never spit, cough or sneeze openly. You, unless using a handkerchief. Hands should be washed 
The different times when we need to wash our hands is immediately after using the toilet, before coming on duty, after sneezing or blowing your nose, after, you, after your break, if you go for a tea or a coffee break or a lunch break and come back to handle your food, do your work, you need to wash your hands well. After smoking, after using cleaning materials and after handling raw food. We people in the food industry know how important it is to segregate raw food and cooked food and to deal with each separately, washing the hands well before we move from raw food or cooked food. Coming to dental hygiene, once again reminded of this thought of health is wealth. So you have to take care of the health of yourself and uh, hygiene of teeth is definitely no exception. So cleaning the teeth regularly with a good toothbrush and a good toothpaste, morning and night, generally that is what is advised. But if you have other food, you know, which you take regularly, which could be lodged in like some non-vegetarian food or a lot of gums and jellies and candies, which children normally take and can get stuck in the tooth, that has to be immediately brushed so that you can, you know, once again get back into your 100% hygiene. And uh, safe water should be used, clean water should be used when cleaning, otherwise the whole purpose of cleaning is lost. So with this you can be uh, rid of uh, your dental caries and uh, you know you can avoid uh, losing tooth or uh, developing rotten tooth and plaque formation can also be reduced to a minimum. Since we are dealing with food science, we have to be cautious about the general principles or the points to be considered when uh, forming a schedule of cleanliness especially for the food service personnel. So let's look into the seven point general personal hygiene code for the staff or the people who handle the food. First point, we should always wash our hands before commencing work and always after using the toilet. Second, we should tell or report to the supervisor at once if there is any skin, nose, throat or stomach problem. Third, you should cover cuts, sores with a waterproof band-aid. Fourth, you should always keep your work area, equipment and utensils clean. Fifth point, always you should wear appropriate clean clothing or uniform after proper washing or starching and ironing. You should keep a daily routine of personal cleanliness starting from the time you wake up right till you enter your work and also from the till the time you leave and till you go to bed so your personal routine of hygiene should be maintained at all costs next you should never spit cough or sneeze openly unless if you need to you should use a handkerchief hands should be washed regularly for example, immediately after you use the toilet, before coming into your work area and reporting for duty. This is very important for food service pers uh, personnel especially. Then after you sneeze or you wipe your nose, you should wash your hands. After you go for a break, if you eat something, if you drink or if you smoke, you should once again wash your hands and then enter your work area. And if you are handling a dirty equipment, you should also uh, wash before uh, previous slide. Well, previous slide. You know, mudi clean the points. Ah. After handling dirty equipment, immediately you should wash your hands with soap and water. And after using cleaning materials, if you are using a particular strong acid or detergent then definitely you should wash your hands with good soap and water before resuming other operations that you do. And if you are handling raw food, especially raw fish or meat, any of the raw food items, you should wash your hands and your workplace and keep it really clean before you use and handle other food. It is said that safe food makes happy customers. 
So let us see what are the few details you have to maintain regarding your uh, the way you dress for work with regard to personal hygiene. First concerning the hair, it should be combed properly, neatly and tucked inside the cap. No hair should be jutting out. And also the person should not, you know, scratch the hair and then, you know, touch the food. Definitely all that is not allowed. Secondly, no earring or necklace or chains or something which is going to be, you know, coming outside your uniform should be worn because that will also probably cause some contamination to the food that is being processed. You should not have any outer pockets in your uniform where you might keep a pen or a knife or anything which you need which could probably fall into the food and contaminate the food. You must wear neat and clean clothes. Uniform should be, I told you earlier, washed, dried, neatly starched and ironed. You should not wear any wrist watch or rings which could probably come in contact with the food or sometimes even by mistake fall into the food and be a source of contamination for the food. Any wounds on your person like a cut or a scrape or uh, any open wound or a sore has to be treated and a neat band-aid also has to be applied. Next, you have to wear a uniform which is really clean and neat, no torn uniform, any threads hanging which could definitely come in the way of your food processing. So any uh, torn uh, clothes have to be mended regularly so that it can be in proper shape before it is being worn. Wear proper footwear. You should not wear a clumsy footwear like slippers which could probably cause you to slip and fall or uh, you know touch other equipment unnecessarily as you are walking instead you should wear a good pair of shoes which are safe and permitted for your particular area of service how do you develop this personal routine plan now these are the points you should remember when developing your own uh, personal routine plan first you should develop it should be a daily routine which is essential for your personal hygiene not something which you will do once in three weeks or whenever you think of it it should be a daily plan and it should be possible to do it daily second one you must shower every day and uh, socks and uh, underclothing like that should be cleaned and changed every day you should brush your teeth at least twice a day and preferably after every meal wash the hair frequently that is almost daily. Next, you must keep your hair, beard, etc., etc., neatly trimmed and covered. That is, wear a hair net or a hat when you are handling the food so that no loose hair could fall into the food, contaminating it. You should keep your fingernails short and clean. Avoid using too much of nail polish or nail varnish, and you must not use too much of makeup or perfume which could uh, definitely you know probably hinder the way you analyze food if you are cooking you should get the actual smell of the food and not your perfume keep uniform and the protective clothing your apron etc should be clean and you must hang up your outdoor clothing in the staff room not in the area where you work for example if you're wearing a hat or another overcoat when you come in for working that should be removed and kept in another area probably in your locker room before you come to your actual area of executing your job you must keep all cuts and burns covered i told you earlier with a waterproof dressing band-aid i mentioned but it can be waterproof so that you can use water and carry out your regular job if you need to use water definitely you should report or tell your supervisor if you are having a suffering from a cold or from a sore throat or any boils or rashes or having any lesions open wounds or if you're having diarrhea or stomach pain etc or if you're having any septic cut or wound your supervisor will decide whether you should be on duty or not or what is the next mode of action he will tell you when you are working you should sp pay special attention to the personal habits of which you may be unaware but you could probably spread bacteria if you are not aware of what the good personal habits you should have 
hair should not be combed or you should not put on the makeup in the area where you are working or in public areas then you should not clean your nose or your teeth or scratch your head when you are in work or in public places your apron is part of your uniform you should not use it to wipe your hands as this also could contaminate your hand and that could be a source of infection you should not lean on your work surfaces or your work area so that you don't give infection or catch any infection from the things that you are being used the foods that you are handling rubbish and other waste materials should not be left lying around the place but you should take it and put it into the bin in a nice way it should be disposed so that it will not be a source of contamination frequent hand washing is the main point which i like to emphasize for you to maintain hygiene and uh, sanitation in the food area where you work what are the causes of this food poisoning we've been talking about infection and uh, disease being uh, promoted due to uncleanly habits what is the cause of this it could be bacteria viruses chemicals metals or even sometimes poisonous a plant or chemicals which are left around the place you must help prevent this food poisoning one by the most important point which we've been seeing earlier washing hands thoroughly second is by cooking the meat or fish or vegetables to the right temperature so that they will not be a source of contamination and also washing fruits and vegetables before using them we can fight back against all such infections by keeping the food safe and free from bacteria right from the time we are accepting the food from the um, person who delivers the food the market vendor till the time we are uh, using it it should be stored at the right temperature in the right place in the right form so that it will not undergo any spoilage when you want to use it you must wash it well then you must separate the food that is the raw food from the cooked food handle each separately and also it should be chilled to the right temperature each of the food have their different temperatures keeping temperature so if you have to store this food for a long time you need to preserve it and keep it in a clean and correct temperature condition so that you will keep food safe from bacteria how does food become contaminated the people commonly harbor germs and directly contaminate food with their hands so all sorts of personal contamination or through sewage contaminating water all this should be kept far away from the food so the environment as such should be protected and kept safe and clean where the food is being processed raw food definitely have to be separated from the cooked food so that less of germs and infection can be passed on liquid form uh, should be uh, defrosted uh, poultry must not be allowed to contaminate the wiping the cloths that are used and high risk food or equipment so these are the places there are soil on raw vegetables if there is when it comes from the market it has to be removed insects and dust carry bacteria into food areas and onto food and food surfaces dead flies can fall into food and cockroaches also if they are allowed to move in the food service area they can be carriers a lot of a lot of contamination so in this module we have seen what are the different uh, methods or sources of contamination starting from personal to the different uh, foods uh, that we might handle to the surface areas the place where we work we have seen the different possible methods of contamination which could spread infection which could bring ill health to the person who is working and also to uh, you know which will affect the productivity of the company we've also learned how to probably wash the hands properly and how to have a routine or a schedule known as a personal uh, hygiene schedule which you can prepare for yourself 
on a, to be followed regularly so that you will be healthy and free of disease. And we've also learned what are the different diseases that can be caused as a result of uncleanliness or not having a good personal hygiene or even if your environment is contaminated, if your workplace is not clean and if you do not have good personal hygiene habits, what the consequences are that also we have seen. So please bear this in mind to have good health, a happy, uh, you know, healthy life and a good uh, success in life. Thank you.